Good evening, this is FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. In tonight's bulletin, Prime Minister acknowledges public feedback to final flag designs not entirely positive. 70 high school students to take part in first ever students' parliament. And shining amongst the boys, female student receives best cadet in drill at male-dominated school. But first, a 51-year-old farmer of Waisa village in Kumbulambua has died following a diving trip. Police say the man was diving at the Waisa reef with his son on Wednesday afternoon when he suddenly fell ill and weak. He was rushed to the Namalata Health Center and later to the Nambawalu Hospital where he was pronounced dead. A post-mortem will be conducted to ascertain the cause of death. The government is willing to listen to new suggestions and comments on the 23 flag designs that have been put out for public feedback. Prime Minister Varenge Bani Marama made this announcement while opening a new multipurpose court in Rewai, Suva. Akusita Tale has more. Two weeks into the release of the final 23 flag designs, a fair share of citizens have either supported the change or strongly opposed it. And I know that the public reaction to the 23 designs that have been put out has not entirely been positive. We also know that many Fijians do not object to the flag to being changed, but want a design that they like. Bainimarama says strong debates and feedbacks on the change are strongly welcomed. I can assure you that as a government, we do not intend to cut corners and we certainly intend to listen to the new suggestions. As we have said before, None of the current designs are locked in stone, and if necessary, we will review the current process to get the right result and get the right flag. Fijians have been urged to give their feedbacks on the current designs, suggest new designs, and join the crusade to find a national symbol Fijians can all identify with, a design that speaks to the experience of being a Fijian now and in the future, not the experience of our colonial past. Akusita Tale. FBC News. And while residents in Rewai and nearby areas in Suva can now benefit from the new multi-purpose court, Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama is adamant the new court will provide more opportunity for sports and recreation. Youths living around Rewai area and nearby communities playing sport have been advised to make use of the sporting facility. Whether it be volleyball, basketball or even netball, Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama says the government is committed to providing Fijians with the best. I ask you all to think of where we were 10 years ago in terms of facilities and where we are now. And it is simply undeniable that no matter what sport you play, we are almost, almost always playing under better conditions than a decade ago. The multi-purpose court cost government over half a million dollars. Seventy high school students in the Central Division will be taking part in the first ever Students' Parliament scheduled for the 20th and 21st of August in Suva. Watisoni Rekondroka has the story. Two students from ES 12 and 13 from the 35 different schools in the Central Division will be selected to participate in the Students' Parliament. Slightly more uh, students participating than our members, but then we have other things to fill, like uh, some working as clerks, some working uh, as advisors to the uh, members and so on. So there will be 70 students, we hope, that will be participating in all. Today, teachers from the participating schools attended a workshop to help them prepare the students for the students. Parliament. Some issues that will be the topic of debate in Parliament are gender equality, democracy, communication and technology. Persisting in emerging challenges like the democratic changes, migration, climate change, environmental degradation and, and, the, techno, and, the, and the technological divide which Fiji and the region are addressing. Their the project will be implemented in three stages from June to August. It's funded by the Japanese Embassy and is undertaken by the Fiji National University and the Ministry of Education. Watisoni Regenroka, FBC News. History was created at the Ratu Kandavu Level School Cadet Passat Parade after a female student was given the Best Cadet in Drill Award. 772 students undertook a week-long cadet program which ended with a parade display before Commanding Officer 3FIR Lieutenant Colonel, 
Elai Modaida, Eleanor Tranga View reports. For the first time in the school's 91-year history, a female student was given the Best Cadet in Drill Award. For the sixth former, being in a male-dominated school was not a problem. I feel proud, like being with the boys, actually they respect us, and they're good, like uh, we interact with each other, like it's good, like they treat, they treat us like sisters. Bibi is amongst the 772 other students who undertook the week-long cadet program, which aims to instill in students self-confidence, motivation, self-esteem and above all discipline a disciplined mind results in a student who is secure in himself and is not easily swayed by peer pressure a disciplined person or student is a leader and knows that a leader is not a follower but one who sets positive trend for others to emulate students have to maintain discipline for students to make wise decision the right decision uh, it's uh, important for us to, to train them to do that on their own. Amongst those that passed out at the parade are the Tueli brothers who came from Wellington and are first year students. It's a big change from the uh, school curriculum in New Zealand, like boarding life different. Uh, we, we all have to, we all have like a special bond with each other here. Yeah, we learn yes, a lot of traditional Fijian things. Lucas Vera has been with RKS for two years now, coming from Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea. Been uh, discipline-wise and like the school life is feel good. Uh, I like the way we do things. And Ratu Kandavulevu School has churned out some leaders of our nation, and the school plans to continue doing so. Lieutenant Colonel Modeva was impressed with the drill displayed by the students. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. Stay tuned. Still to come on FBC News, Fiji's largest tourism event, the Fijian Tourism Expo, ends on a high note. If you just joined us on the system after dark, this is a homegrown number courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. Welcome back to FPC News. Now, the Fiji Trades Union Congress has rejected the Employment Relations Promulgation Amendment Bill. The union stand was presented to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights by General Secretary Felix Anthony yesterday. Eleanor Turangaiview reports. The Parliamentary Standing Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights has been told that the bill in its current form is not compliant with the tripartite agreement signed in Geneva nor the core conventions of the International Labour Organization. This bill was supposed to have been negotiated with the social partners, uh, vetted by the social partners prior to it being submitted to Parliament. That was not the case. Government simply dictated the process uh, and unilaterally decided that it was going to uh, uh, table the bill in Parliament. Felix Anthony highlighted several issues with the bill one of which is the inclusion of all government-owned entities and corporations as essential services, as well as the right to strike. He says while the ERP gives the right to strike, the amendment bill takes this right away. He says another issue is the representation of workers in the arbitration court, as the amendment's bill creates a new court altogether. We see that the minister actually decides who should represent the workers, who should represent the employers. Uh, he is not bound by the nominations made by the workers uh, group or the employers group. Anthony says several issues in the essential national industry services decree, which is before parliament to be repealed, is being included in the amendment bill. It's meaningless to say we will repeal the ENI decree and then import parts of the decree back into this bill 
uh, uh, repeal the ENI decree, but not address the essential elements of like uh, the collective agreements, the registration of unions, and not only that, but this bill also imports in, uh, imports from the ENI decree the bargaining units. Public submissions before the committee ended yesterday, with a final report expected to be tabled in Parliament in the July sitting, which begins on the sixth. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC News. Employment Relations Minister Chio Chikonrote says he is not a member of the committee and is not aware of FTUC's submissions. The Lotoka High Court has rejected a bail application for Ethan Kai, an Australian citizen charged with unlawful importation of illicit drugs valued at about $30 million. The court dismissed the application on the grounds of unlikelihood of surrender to custody if granted bail and interest of justice. Judge Justice Tushara Rajasinghe says the offence is serious in nature as it involves the trafficking of 29.9 kilograms of heroin, one of the largest found in the history of Fiji. Justice Rajasinghe says the offence, which involved sophisticated planning, will attract a heavy penalty if Kai is found guilty. In addition, he says the hearing has been fixed for next month, so Kai is not required to remain in prison for long. Kai was arrested by police on December 20, 2014, after about 80 packets of heroin were discovered inside a consignment of quad bike tyres at the Queen Elizabeth Wharf in Lotoka. The Fijian Tourism Expo has ended, setting the platform for future events to be bigger and better. The three-day event held at Denarau attracted more than 150 international buyers. Tourism Fiji has received good reviews about the second Fijian Tourism Expo. Minister Fayaz Koya says local sellers have done a great job in selling Fiji offshore. The response that we've had uh, has been absolutely 100% positive. Uh, in fact, been around for three days and spoken to a lot of the buyers and sellers. And there's nothing but good words about Fiji. With the ministry working on increasing visa arrivals, the Fijian Tourism Expo has played its part in getting more tourists into the country. You can only gauge that from the buyers when they sell them across. In a week or two's time, we'll start gauging it with all the bookings that come in, etc. And it's looking very positive. Tourism Fiji received tremendous response from local tourism operators to be part of the event. However, due to limited space, some requests were turned down. The minister is hoping this will not be the case come 2016. We just could not fill up the whole, couldn't, couldn't fill everybody's, uh, everybody up, so we've had to restrict it. But we will be looking at big, bigger and better options for next year. Tourism Fiji has taken on board the initiative to promote green growth in the industry. And the minister has called on international buyers to ensure that those who come to Fiji are to regard it as a precious destination. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC News. The Fiji Roads Authority plans to upgrade all traffic lights to reduce congestion, especially along the Suva Nosori corridor. Savaira Tambo reports most of the traffic lights are damaged. The Fiji Roads Authority has found problem with most of the traffic lights around the country. There's no doubt that traffic lights, uh, as they are at the moment, are uh, not uh, helping the situation significantly. But uh, as I say, we do have a program for putting new controllers. Uh, a lot of these traffic lights are in very poor condition. The controllers are damaged or broken. FRA manager, strategy, planning and performance, Rory Garland, says the traffic lights are making traffic jams worse. However, a completely new network of lights should be in place by the end of next year. FBC News asks some road users whether traffic lights help during peak hours. Sometimes the changing of lights is too slow, causing traffic jam. It's okay, because if uh, lights, uh, traffic lights are there, it, uh, less uh, accident happens. Traffic lights save our lives, and it does not do anything with traffic jam. While revamping all traffic lights, the FRA will also improve runabouts, but this is part of its 15-year plan. Our uh, Greater Suva Transportation Study uh, identified a whole series of junctions that uh, need improvement and these uh, a range of junctions, um, particularly some of the roundabouts which we want to replace with uh, signalised uh, uh, junctions. Congestion is not just confined to Suva but other towns and cities as well. Until the FRA is able to get rid of all the obstacles, drivers and pedestrians will have to bear with the inconvenience. Sabai Ratambua, FBC News. 
The second Fiji Hindu National Conference was opened today by the President Ratu Epeli Nailatikau. With the theme sustaining the Fijian community through health benefits of yoga and meditation, Ratu Epeli stressed the importance of yoga. Sharin Lata has more. Like many Pacific Island countries, Fiji has a very high prevalence of non-communicable diseases and this can be avoided through meditation, says President Ratu Epeli Nailatikau. He says while it might be correct to think that yoga is a Hindu spiritual and ascetic discipline, it is a misconception to associate it only with Hinduism. I can envisage the practice of yoga leading to a healthier, happier and longer lifespan for Fiji. Yoga is a universal art practiced by millions of people the world over for health and relaxation. The president says obesity and stress-related health issues are major concerns for Fijians and yoga has been proven to be successful in addressing these issues. The two-day conference will cover ancient practices of yoga and meditation promoted by various organizations in Fiji, which will bring people of all race together. Our aim is to support and work with all Hindu faith-based organizations and other organizations, help them grow and strengthen our relationship with the government agencies to better serve the entire country. The conference aims to observe the declaration by the United Nations that was made last year for countries around the world to celebrate International Yoga Day on 21st June. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Coming up on FPC Sports, Suva thrashes Lotoka in Skipper Cup. And Pacific Games athletes bear weld. Gold FM only the classic hits, beautiful song from the group Firehouse and When I Look Into Your Eyes. Before that you heard from Smokey Robinson with One Hot Beat. We'll take a short break and join us in the next hour for more music from Seal. Bulabalaka, I'm DJ Tora. Join me every weekdays, 7 until midnight on the Premium Classics. Right here on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Brief showers and windy conditions were experienced over most parts of the country today. Meanwhile, a strong east to southeast wind flow prevails over the Pacific. Looking at the temperatures, Suva and Savu Savu were the coolest places today, recording 26 degrees on the temperature chart. The warmest center was Lambasa with 29 degrees. Tomorrow you can expect fine apart from brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Cool at night, rough to very rough seas. And the outlook for Monday is some showers over most places. On to our headlines. Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama acknowledges public feedback to final flag designs is not entirely positive. 70 high school students from 35 Suva schools to take part in first ever students' parliament in August. And shining amongst the boys, female student receives best cadet in drill at male-dominated school. On to our poll question. Should fines for traffic offences be increased? You can visit our FPC website to take part. Now you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj or you can share it with us via our Facebook page FPC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or hashtag FPC News. You've been watching FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Good night. <laughs>